Hey, Paul. Uh, oh, who, who's this? Um, Miss Miss Payne. What, Mistress Payne? I, is Paul? Is it Paul's phone? Is Paul there? Um, yeah, it is important. I, I kind of need to talk to him right away. I, I have no idea how hard it is to get a ball gag out. I, I'm sorry, but I really need to. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I can hold on. You know, you should try getting some hold music. I mean, that would make your business look bigger and more important. Hey, buddy. Uh, sorry to interrupt you. I, what's what's that all about? That sounds weird. It doesn't sound like it has anything to do with football. Well, you're right. I wouldn't really know anything about football, would I? Um, anyway, I, that doesn't matter. I, I had a great idea I wanted to run by you. So, <clears throat> just follow me here. The 12 Pods of Christmas. What I want to do is I want to do a, a podcast every single day for the 12 days leading up to Christmas. They'll all be Christmas-themed. I'll try to have people write in. You know, our fans can talk about their Christmas traditions. Maybe we'll learn some stuff, and I'll try to come up with some funny stuff. I, I think it would be a great a, a great time, and it would be, a, like, the most ambitious thing we've ever tried. You know, what do you think? Is that a great idea? Oh, okay, what are your questions? No, no, you, I, I wouldn't expect you to do anything. I, I'll handle it all. I'll do all the recording. You don't have to do anything. What else? Well, of course your name's still going to be in the credits. You always get an executive producer credit. Yes, and it would still come first. I mean, that was a decision I made when I recorded the credits. I'm never going to change that. All right, is that that good? Well, fantastic. Uh, you know, I kind of wish you had said that it was a great idea and then asked your questions because uh, the way you did it was kind of douchey. Well, yeah, that, that wouldn't really be you anyway. Uh, all right, well, I'm going to get to work on this, and um, you go have fun getting ready for football, all right? Okay, bye-bye. This time on Geek Pod Blue. Warning, station is now code blue. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a very special edition of Geek Pod Blue. I am your host, Hugh, and I am not going to be doing all the normal little bells and whistles that you are all used to uh, in episodes of Geek Pod Blue these days, because this is the beginning of something very, very special. This is the beginning of Geek Pod's 12 Days of Christmas, and I'm going to be sending you guys a podcast that is christmas theme every single day for the next 12 days. Now, how did I come up with this, this idea? Well, you know, I was kicking stuff around, trying to think of something good to do for the holidays, got some topics written down, and then I discovered that the 12 days of Christmas actually start on December 25th, and they run into January. I was like, what? Who celebrates after Christmas? Well, apparently, that's how the 12 days of Christmas are actually supposed to work. It's 12 days of celebrating over the holidays. Now, my entire life, now mind you, by the time you guys hear this, this will have been 41 years of my life. I have believed that the 12 days of Christmas were the 12 days leading up until Christmas, or at least 11 days, and maybe the 12th one was Christmas. I was not sure. What we are going to do, though, is we are going to be giving you something every single day leading up to Christmas, uh, including Christmas Day. There'll be something coming out that day just to say thank you for uh, putting up with me and listening to everything that I've put out this year. Uh, so we are going to get started with our Christmas theme by talking about St. Nicholas. Now, who is St. Nicholas? Lana, who is St. Nicholas? Santa Claus. Do you believe in Santa Claus? No. Why not? You're not real. S actually, Santa Claus was a real person. His name was St. Nicholas. In fact, uh, the true story of Santa Claus begins uh, down in the 3rd century in a small village uh, in Greece, I believe it was, called Patara. Now, this is now the southern coast of Turkey. And he was uh, born to wealthy parents, and they raised him to be a devout Christian. Now, when he was very young, they died uh, in an epidemic, which is, you know, what happens back then. You know, you're lucky if you live to be 32. So uh, he was orphaned at that point, but he decided, you know, he had a lot of money, so he was going to continue following the Christian upbringing that they had given him. And so they, they had said, 
said, uh, you know, follow what uh, Jesus Christ said, sell what you own and give money to the poor. So he used his entire inheritance to assist the needy, the sick, the suffering, the hurting. He dedicated his life to serving God and was made the Bishop of Mira while still a very young man. I mean, bishops are generally older men. Um, but, you know, he was a very young man at that point. And he became known everywhere for his generosity to those in need. Uh, he loved children. He loved sailors and ships and things like that. He was always just looking out for other people. Now, during this time, he did a lot of great things and helped a lot of people. Um, under the Roman emperor then, who ruthlessly ruthlessly persecuted the Christians, he uh, suffered for his faith. He was exiled, he was imprisoned, and at that point, the prisons were so full of clergy that there, weren't any, there wasn't any actual room for real criminals. Thieves and robbers and murderers, they were all out, and all of the uh, Christian clergy were put in jail. Now, he did eventually get released, and after his release, he attended the Council of Nicaea, which is something we will talk about someday, because the Council of Nicaea is where they basically rewrote the Bible. And I've got lots of fun stuff to say about that, but not now. Um, St. Nicholas died on December 6th in 343 in Mira and was buried in his cathedral church. Now, there is uh, this is not where the story ended. I mean, he became a saint. Uh, he, there were celebrations all across the world, all about St. Nicholas and all the great things he did. But, you know, maybe we should call this St. Nicholas the legend continues. Now, there was a point in 1071 uh, where the emperor of the Byzantine Empire was, you know, fighting with uh, the Sultan Alp Arslan of the Seljuk Turks. And they were fighting back and forth. And basically what happened is uh, the remains of St. Nicholas finally were able to be accessed, okay? Nicholas' tomb in Mira had become a popular place of pilgrimage, and uh, many wars in the region had, you know, made it difficult. Christians couldn't access the tomb because there were always people fighting. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, okay? Because uh, there were uh, sailors who showed up and collected half of Nicholas' skeleton, but they left the minor fragments in the grave. Uh, the others were collected by some uh, Venetian sailors later on, and they kind of kept them separate. And there were two scientific investigations of the relics in both Bari and Venice, uh, which just, this is far, later on. I mean, this is recent history, and they discovered that uh, they belonged to the same skeleton. Now, it's said that the uh, relics in Mira of St. Nicholas every year excrete this clear watery liquid which smells like rose water and they're calling it manna or myrrh and the faithful believe that this possess miraculous powers now after the relics were brought to bari they continue to do the same thing and uh, people uh, every year you know want to flock to these relics the, uh, the manna is collected uh, from a sarcophagus, which is located in the Basilica Vault, and uh, sometimes they'll actually sell it in shops. Now, the liquid gradually seeps out of the tomb, but they don't know if it originates from the body, which is highly unlikely, or from the marble itself, because the entire town of Bari is a harbor. This means the tomb is below sea level, and uh, yet there's obviously some natural explanations for this liquid coming out, but, you know, it's the same as finding Jesus in your toast or on your waffle, you know? Human beings... We'll find explanations for things that aren't there all the time. That's how it works. Now, in 1993, a grave was found on the Turkish island of Jamil, which historians believe is the original tomb of St. Nicholas. Now, on December 28, 2009, the Turkish government announced that it would formally be requesting the return of St. Nicholas' skeletal remains to Turkey from the Italian government. Turkish authorities have asserted that St. Nicholas himself wanted to be buried in his Episcopal town, which his remains were illegally removed from, technically. Now, this is a lot of history on Santa Claus. You know, he, he clearly was a real figure, and we've attributed a lot of other things to him throughout the years. You know, he has become a jolly red elf, large red jolly elf, uh, with alcoholic cheeks, I mean rosy cheeks, uh, and a red nose. And, you know, I, yeah, I got to wonder, you know, if I, you know, being a fat bearded guy, um, put on a, an elf suit and went out in public and tried to get little kids to sit on my lap, I would probably be thrown in jail. But he gets away with it all the time, you know, because of the church. That's how it works. Now, I, I don't know if you guys, you know, some people have, you know, fears of clowns and things like that. You know, some people have fear of Santa Claus as well, uh, you know, or elves or anything like that. I, I've always, you know, found that uh, Santa Claus is one of those uh, characters that, that just makes the holiday better. In fact, I've even thought about, since I'm getting older and 
rounder and beardier, maybe it would be fun to get a Santa suit and bring some Christmas joy to people just to be part of it, you know? Um, I don't know if I could really do that. I told my wife that she should be Mrs. Claus. I'm like, you know, it's 2017. We should have an inter interracial Claus couple. It's about time. We see the, the, the black Santa at Price Right every time we go there, and I've been trying to get her to let me buy one and put it out front. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. You know, so it's it's one of those things. Yeah, it, Santa is such an enduring figure that you know there really shouldn't be a color involved or or anything that that makes him not part of everybody's culture. It's something clearly, uh, at least from a commercial standpoint and from a holiday spirit standpoint, designed for everybody. Or at least that's my opinion. Now I do have an interesting story. I actually have played Santa Claus once years ago. I worked at a pet store called Pet Express out in North Syracuse. And uh, they had this holiday tradition of um, having someone dress up as Santa Claus. And people would bring in their dogs, their cats, their iguanas, their snakes, whatever, to, to get pictures with Santa Claus. Now, now, first of all, while I love my cats to death, I'm not bringing my cats out in public to get pictures with Santa Claus. I think that's fucking insane. Um, but, you know, for some people, that's all they have. Maybe they don't have kids. Maybe they just have more money than they know what to do with and want to do stupid shit with it. Uh, whatever the reason, it's perfectly fine. I just think it's a little nutty. Now... Here I am, I'm sitting there, and people brought in their iguanas and snakes, and I mean, those are the cool things. I, I liked uh, playing with reptiles, so there wasn't any fear involved. And then this lady brings in these two giant dogs. Now, I think they were Great Danes. Back then, I was, well, I'm still not really a dog person, uh, but I couldn't look at a dog and, you know, tell by breed. We didn't sell dogs at that store, so it's not like it was something I should have known while working at the store. But I, uh, so I'm sitting there, and she brings these giant dogs up, and... They, they wrap leashes around my hands or having trouble getting him to sit. I'm sitting in the, the chair all dressed up as Santa Claus, you know, you know, ready to go ho, ho, ho. And we have a professional photographer there. So the dogs are finally sitting and I'm sitting there in the chair when all of a sudden something spooks them. I think somebody might have opened the, the front door of the store, the bell goes off, whatever. Both dogs take off for the front of the store. I have short leashes wrapped around my wrists and then wrapped several times around my hands to make sure I have a good grip on them. Well, you know what happens next. Santa comes flying up out of the chair and goes face first on the rug floor and gets dragged a few feet before the dog stop. Because, I mean, I wasn't as big as I am now, but I was still a big person. And they, they weren't going to actually drag me along like reindeer in a sleigh. Uh, but it was pretty embarrassing. It hurt a little bit. Uh, but I definitely got to laugh about it now because it isn't funny how everything works out. Right, Lana? Yep. Yeah, she's just going to say yes to whatever I say. Um because that's how the the whole father daughter dynamic is supposed to work. Now, not really. You got to say that louder so the people can hear you. Not really. Okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's my Santa Claus story. You know, it was definitely a fun time. I think it would be nice though because I, 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 maybe this is an age thing, but you know, as I get older, I want to enjoy the Christmas spirit more than I am concerned with getting things or whatever. I, I'm getting, uh, I'm more in the spirit of Saint Nicholas and wanting to give and make people happy. So that certainly can't be a bad thing. And I hope that all of you pick up some of that too this holiday season. Now, for the rest of this uh, this special Geek Pod event, let's call it. We are going to have 12 episodes. I cannot guarantee that every single episode is going to be as long as another one. And sorry about that. Normally I would try to edit that out, but um, my dogs are going crazy. I don't know what's going on out there. Uh, but over the next 12 days, we're going to be releasing a podcast every single day. I'm going to be releasing a podcast every day. Uh, we're going to have some special stuff for you. Hopefully, we'll have some guest appearances per se. Oh, oh, hold on. My phone is ringing. Um, that's got to be Paul. Hold on. Text from Paul. Text from Paul. Everybody loves to get text from Paul. Text from Paul. Text from Paul. Everybody loves to get text from Paul. Now, I asked Paul to send me a text message every day um, saying, you know, what I would get him for Christmas, for the 12 days of Christmas, what I would go and get my best friend. So uh, let's see what he said. He said, on the first day of Christmas, my Hugh friend gave to me, that's clever, my Hugh friend gave to me one stern talking to about my taste in beer. I'd say that is about accurate, buddy. That is right on point. And that is going to wrap things up for this episode. Uh, there is much more tomfoolery and chicanery. Wait, wait. 
I should call it candy canery, to come over the next uh, 12 days. So please tune in. I am looking forward to uh, talking to you guys. And until then, tuck and roll, kids. Geek Pod Blue is a Geek Pod Network production. Executive producers Paul Showens and Hugh Allen. Concept created by Paul Showens and Hugh Allen. Intro is Opportunity by Jameis Breed. Closing is Bucket by Jameis Breed. Both licensed for use by Dennis Johnston. Want to help the show? Leave a five-star rating on iTunes. GeekPod can be reached at contribute at geekpod.com or send us a tweet at geekpod. That's G33KPOD. You can also find GeekPod on Facebook and Instagram. G33KPOD. That's G33KPOD.